Thanks for checking out the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Be sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel and click the notification icon. And if you're on iTunes, please go subscribe and leave a sexy or creepy review on there. I will be reading the best or worst reviews every week, so long as they are five stars. And I have just plucked out a review. This one is from Paul from Florida. And he wrote, more like Nayer. Seriously, though, Chrissy, cool fist. All right, not the most eloquent review, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you, Paul from Florida. Um, a little weak, to be honest. I think you could do better. Uh, so excited to have this girl on the show today. She has been a very close friend of mine for years and years. One of my favorite people. And the host of the Next to Madison podcast, Madison Malloy, how are you? Hi, girl. I'm so excited to see you. It's been way too long. It's been way too long, and I uh, I feel like a terrible friend because, like, weeks ago, you were like, we should, um, you know, catch up over Skype, and now here we are, uh, <laughs> like, doing a podcast, and this is how we catch up, I guess. I know. I know. Well, this whole corona thing has just been crazy. I'm not even in New York. Woo, right. You're in Colorado. Yeah, I came to Denver. So I'll be here for another couple of weeks and then I'll be back. So you're, are you staying at your family's house, so your parents' house right now? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're great. I mean, they, they don't, you know, ask where I go or anything, but you still feel like, you know, it's still a mind fuck in a way to live with your parents. Are you staying in your childhood room that you grew up I, in? Yep. That um, is a mind fuck. That is like, like going back in time but with crow's feet. <laughs> no, we can't see them. You look great. I, I know the feeling because anytime I would stay at my parents' house, it's so weird and it doesn't matter how much therapy you do. There's something about being in the house you grew up in, in, in the room you grew up in, around your parents that kind of like reverts you back to childlike times. Yeah. But what's great is my mom is, she's so great. She does my laundry and Ooh. I come up to the office and I work and she'll call up to me and say, Hey, do you want a turkey sandwich? And I'll be like, uh, Aww. yeah, that's great. So lunch is ready. Dinner's ready. So all I do is like, I'm able to work out and work. And then I just go down and eat. I'm like, you're the best mom ever. That really is the best mom. My mom's yeah. dead. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's funny. That's weird. I'm not used to it yet. Um, that's interesting though. But I feel like I'm sort of becoming my own mom. Like I hear the voice in my head, like make your bed, make a turkey sandwich for Madison. You know things yeah. like that. <laughs> exactly. Well, she's looking after you. You know. Yeah, and I and I remember you were somebody who, when she was like sick and passing, God, I think you might have been the very first person I talked to. Um, as soon as she died, I was like like on my way into the city about to have like a regular ass day I was just tell telling somebody on another podcast that I went and did like comedy spots the same night that she died because I just was like I, I don't know I wasn't able to give myself the time off and I just was like not fully embracing it yet and I and I just was like short-circuiting I was like what I knew this was coming on I should be able to do my spots but I remember I was like on my way into the city and I called you and I, t I think you might've been the first person I told and, and you were just like, oh my God. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like you gave me a lot of comfort. Like I was raised Methodist. I was confirmed. And then we kind of all stopped going to church. Like all three of the kids were confirmed. We did Sunday school. It was like really cute. We did it growing up, like the egg hunt holidays were fun, but we really <laughs> kind of stopped going. Like we, we would go to church because my grandma was really religious. Like she was like hardcore Methodist. She had like hundred Bibles in her house. And, um, I guess it was important to my mom that we all kind of be raised with something. Whereas my dad was like German immigrant came from like Roman Catholic upbringing, like fucking hates the Catholic church, thinks it's all a sham. Um, was not into us going to church, but like, was okay, you know, went along with it, whatever. Um, and I, I wonder if that was part of the reason why we just stopped going. It's just sort of like we did the minimum requirement and then we stopped. But I feel like you, you and your faith really helped me through the, the, like my mom's passing because you described it like in a way that nobody really had before. Like, I don't know. I was so, and I, I don't even actually exactly remember what you said, but, um, 
you were like, she's just like watching over. She's with you. Like there's no, she's not gone. And, yeah. I um, mean, it, it's true. It's like, you know, they, science has proven that like energy can't die, right? Whether you believe in an afterlife or not, but it, it can't be destroyed and we're energy and, um, you know, whatever anyone believes in is, is great. Um, but for me, it was like, you know, I think I was, I remember when you were telling me outside the West side comedy club that she was sick and it had come back and it was getting really bad. And I told you like, oh, you should go watch some of those near death experience videos on YouTube because it talks about the people who have died and come back and their experience when they get to the other side of that, this is real. And they didn't want to come back. And it was, it's a place that we're earning. It's like, we're getting ready for the ultimate vacation in a way, right? Like we're here for our souls to grow and to learn and to evolve. And then when we're done with our, our time and our mission, then, you know, we get to go back up. And I wanted you to see that because I knew you being upset. It was, you know, not knowing, having more comfort in like where your mom's going um, and that she's connected with her, her loved ones and her family members and that she is able to kind of be a guardian angel for you. Um, you yeah. Know, to look after you down here. And, and hopefully like wherever she is there, I'm imagining just like, constantly a pina colada in her hand i imagine yeah. chat, chatting up like a cute 30 year old guy um you know right? hanging out with elvis and uh god is tina turner even still alive no i guess she's still here but you really love tina yeah, turner okay. <laughs> um oh it was it's hard though it's were you were you raised are you protestant madison or are you um, i would say i'm like more christian yeah more yeah like oh gee were you I'm were like you, i'm not like a crazy like bible belt person i mean i'm definitely you know respect all people's religions and and their beliefs and we all i i think we all have one god but we just call, sometimes refer to him as different names and that's okay um but yeah it, it's just you know having that faith and i think especially during this corona thing with everything getting so out of control that my faith has become stronger um, really? Hmm. Yeah, because it's kind of like, who else is going to keep you safe and ensure that you're okay? And then if you do pass, it's your time. Um, and that's like, you know, God, he put us, put you on the planet for a reason and he's going to take you home when you're ready. And we have no control over that. Which is a way, good. it's kind of like a weight off, you know, if, if that's what you believe. It's, you know, yeah. not, not that you should treat your, your body and mind like garbage, you know, and like not right. be healthy, but... um. Yeah, you have to have like some kind of hope and faith in these times because they are super scary and uh, it's weird. It's not like anything either of us have experienced in our lifetimes, you know. I know, and I hope we never experience it again. I mean, it's been very trying just seeing people like, you know, lose their jobs and a lot of people kind of who made it through are now getting laid off again. So it's just like, you know, I think we're starting to... to the positives out of this is that we got to take time to reset. We got to find out what was really important. You got to reconnect with people um, via phone or via Skype that maybe you were so busy that you weren't doing it. So there's a lot of like blessings that came out of it and kind of like the world to reset and restart in a way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, okay, let's, let's get on with this. This is yeah. crazy. And, and they've been wrong the entire time. So it's oh like, God. Yeah. It's there's so much lying. There's so much BS. Like at the oh. very beginning, they were like, masks don't help at all. And now it's like, they're telling us it's, it's mandatory. It's it, it's just common sense dictates that like, you don't need to wear a fucking mask outside. You don't even need to wear one if you're healthy yet. Like, I don't know. Everyone's so fucking brainwashed. Like I could go on and on about that alone. What I did realize was very important to me in the choir was gel manicures, which I just got one this morning. You can't even tell. Oh, oh, there you go. It. It's like beige with oh the God, like silver and it's white like, sparkles. It's like a unicorn. It's like you fingered a unicorn up its butt. Yes, I did. And she liked it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so good. And I got a pedicure and it was wild. Like I went in, I went in to like this morning, the place where I go. And I was like, hi girls. Like I really miss them. And then before I knew it, I like had this thing at my forehead. She was taking my temperature. She just like uh -huh. shot this like gun thing at my forehead. And I was like, wow, I, I just hadn't seen one of those before. And 
I was 98.4 and I was like, well, what's the limit? And she's like, oh, if it's like a hundred, I have to like kick you out. So I was like, damn. And then they had far less tables in there. There was only three ladies in there and it was appointment only because I made yeah. the appointment yesterday and I just, I felt bad. You know, I just was like, oh man, I hope these guys can, and all the, you know, all the businesses that have been struggling, I hope they can get through somehow. I mean, I, that's the thing too. Like so many restaurants are, are closing and, you know, it's just, it's a very sad, sad time. Yeah. Well. You know, the world is a very sad place. Yeah. But we have podcasts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been doing uh, next to Madison for what over a year now at this point was it uh, almost two hit our, hit our year anniversary on June 6th oh wow yeah so it was uh it's it's been great it's been fun I mean I've met so many awesome people and had so many great conversations and you know it's kind of you know diverted along the way as first it was kind of like okay I'm a comedian it'll be a comedian podcast and then I realized that like as much as I love comedy and being funny that wasn't my interest when it came to podcasts necessarily. And I really wanted to learn and help other people learn. So that's kind of where it veered off and went to. So it's kind of, I should just advertise it as the non-funny Madison Malloy podcast. Oh, <laughs> it is funny. And I, you just have like experts on, like you have uh, experts in their field. Like it's, and it's yeah. a, a wide range of topics. It's like, I find the, the podcast that just is like comedians interviewing other comedians and that's all they ever do. It's like, that's so inside baseball. And I feel like you're going to limit your, your, uh, I don't know, your yeah. net of who you're oh, yeah. going to reach. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And obviously that's our, that's our easiest reach. Cause you know, that's kind of what we do, but have you still been writing comedy jokes? I've been so bad about, it. I've been working <gasps> so hard yeah. on everything else that I'm like, Oh my God, I can't remember the last time I wrote a joke. I am writing. I mean, like I'm still tweeting. Um, I joined Parler, which is basically like Twitter, but Me with too. no um, censorship. So yeah. I'm very excited about that platform. Me I feel too. like it's a long time coming and I feel like t Twitter stock is like going down uh, and Parler is just going to be like the new thing. So yeah. yeah, it's good. It's exciting to follow people that, ha that I feel like I've always known as being banned or shadow banned and, um, the fact yeah, that he's, you know, it makes, it makes me more curious to see what they actually have to say. Like Alex Jones and uh, Laura Loomy, right? What's her name? She's, she's Loomer. Like, is it Loomer? Loomer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's running for Congress in Florida and uh, like Milo Yiannopoulos. And like, it's like all these people that are so like, Ooh, they've been banned. It's like, it makes me want to check yeah. them out even more. Well, that's exactly right. And we do need an unbiased platform because social media was supposed to be a platform for, for people to connect and share their ideas not somebody to say you're right and you're wrong because let's let's face it anything you put on twitter anything you put on facebook or instagram is strictly an opinion it's not fact it's an opinion so right. to have somebody censor you is like not that's not your job you know right. people, people know that everything's not true and they need to take what if they don't like it just new people what happened to this the whole this cancel culture is just insane it is really insane. And I, I feel like, uh, it's kind of like losing its luster. I, I feel like the people that try to cancel, it's like, it's not as long lasting. It's just like, eh, you get trolled for a couple of weeks and then you're, you're back to business as usual, which is, makes me happy. Cause I feel like I, someone's trying to cancel me like once a month. So I'm okay. Well, like, you know what? And that means you're doing something right. Like I've been very timid or you know to speak about anything and it's just like you know I'm kind of you know staying under things and just focusing on kind of my life and, and my work and and donating to causes without blasting out on the internet oh my god oh. wait you wait Madison you mean you're telling me that you can donate money to a charity and not post it all over social yes. media yeah how is that possible person, <laughs> and the only person that knows would be a CPA because it's a write-off to encourage you to um, donate more. So I mean, I just, about I can't fathom the not bragging part of charity yeah. work. I mean, I just uh, didn't know that you could have the option of not telling everybody how, what a great person you were. <laughs> that's what like people, I know, that's what like people, they'll, they'll post all this stuff online, but it's like, you posting a picture and writing something for five seconds is fine, but like, it's not really making that much of a difference. Like put your money where your mouth is. 
sense, you know? Exactly. And I, and I, you brought up an interesting point about like kind of keeping low key on a lot of these issues, because I feel like there are, there are such, there are these two, like sort of, I don't know, there's more than two, but to, I definitely feel like there are comedy clicks and, um, yeah. You know, it's, I understand, it's, it's, you know, I feel like I'm sort of firmly, it took me a few years of like fighting to get to where I was of like, okay, I feel like I'm, I can pretty much like say how I feel because yeah. I've, I've sort of been canceled out of, of a, a few other groups. And it's like, I found my show at Compound Media. I do, I would do shows on Gas Digital. I'd be like, okay, these are sort of like my people, but I had to, I feel like I had to really fight and work to get here. And it took a lot of like getting canceled and getting shit on and getting thrown out of Facebook groups to sort of like, but it's like, it's, it's really unfair that that's what it, you know, what it comes down to is this idea that you have to pick a side in comedy. It's like, you're either with like the woke people that are on the right side of every issue and they're politically correct and they're inclusive and everything they say is perfect and they never make a mistake. Or you're with like, uh, I don't know, the, the people who are, oh, they're racist. They're all right. Like people, people think like if you do, uh, you know, if you do a show on compound media, you're all right. It's like fucking wild to me. And it's like, why do we have to put each other into these groups, but they are there. They do exist. I know. And like, I'm not too familiar with the comedy clicks. Like I've never really joined a lot of those Facebook things. I've just kind of, you're better off. They're all horseshit. Yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm not somebody who just hangs out. Like I've been able to keep, sorry, somebody better get that. There. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's your mom. Your turkey sandwich is ready. <laughs> it, is, it is. Let me mute this phone. Let me mute this phone. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry. Can't believe it. The unprofessionalism. I know. I know. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah. So these oh, groups. Oh, yeah. Comedy clicks. I keep hearing about these groups, but like, I just feel like I kept myself out of like the drama. You know what I'm saying? And maybe some people are like, oh, you, maybe you should hang out more. But it's like, hang out for what? If I'm not working and I'm not drinking, like, and you socialize, I don't need to stay till three in the morning. What, what am I accomplishing? at that yeah. moment in time. And you and I both, we also work. So like we have to be up in the morning as well. And like, you know, living a healthy lifestyle and trying to like, you know, you got to just do the work. It's not about like the clicks and all that, but yeah, I mean, I hear about these clicks and it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, I've been, see I've been watching people on social media and like some of the stuff they're posting, whether they think they're on the right side of things, it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. And even if you're not like liking or retweeting or sharing, it's like, I think that's what people don't realize. It's like people, everybody kind of sees what you're doing. You know, like if you're going to put out a list and be like, oh, the, this is who I think the racist comics are in New York oh, yeah. City. What was that about? Did you see that list? Yeah, this guy, Naruto Williams, he, I, I think he's just been sort of like floundering in the comedy community for like the better part of 10 years. Like I knew who he was, but like, uh, you know, I was like cool with him. And then I just see like, oh, this list. And I see all these other people retweeting it, sharing it. Other people saying, yeah, don't book. If you book a show, don't book anybody on this list. And, and, and Neruda would be like, oh yeah. Like it's just so on his high horse. Like, well, a couple people have called and apologized to me and they were able to get off the racist list. And I'm like, what are you even basing this off of? And yeah. it was, it was like insane. It was just like false. Like Anthony Cumia was on there. He's not even a stand up comic. Corinne Fisher was on there. She's like, she's the wokest, you know, like she's every yeah, picture she's of her is at a protest. So I'm like, all right, right. Well, you clearly have no fucking clue what you're talking about. And then like, you know, myself and Gino Bisconti are not on there. So it's like, well, well yeah. what is this? <laughs> what is this about? But that's the thing too. It's like, what happened to comedy? Like comedy is, is the one place where you can actually go after all religions, all races, all people in a funny, like, not insulting, but like insulting, but insulting with what, you know? That's right. And, and it's was insulting <laughs> someone. It doesn't, doesn't mean fucking anything. I think that's why roast battles became so popular a few years ago, because mm -hmm. I think we were all kind of tired of sort of like walking on eggshells around each other. And here's the thing where it's designed, we are designed to hurt each other's feelings and make fun of each other and be brutal. And it's like, we have to call it a roast battle because if we just take jabs at each other, Right. Regularly. Oh, well, then everyone's going to be a victim and, you know, triggered. So. Well, that's the thing too. It's like, you know, people, people's feelings get hurt all the time. That's just part of being a human being. That's fine. But if your feelings get hurt to go to, to have the, 
the hate and the anger in you that would cause you to want to destroy somebody's career and life is just, that's the part where I don't understand. It's like if somebody offended you, you can feel that. You have a right to be hurt, but you don't have a right to go off and try to destroy them. That's yeah. where we've gone wrong in this society. It's, you know? it's actually an incredibly selfish act because it's like, it's, you're making it about you. You're like, well, I didn't find this funny. I was offended. Yeah. So I get to decide that you're out of a job. I get to decide that you're not working again because of me and my tastes, um, you know, I get to it's decide for, even, even if there's, um, far many more people who love what you do and think you're super fucking funny, but that's the thing is like those people that are enjoying you are, are yeah. sometimes quieter. And then there's people yeah. in the middle and then there's people with no fucking life. And it, it's like, they're trying to make it about them. They think that their tastes and their point of view is better than everybody else's. Well, those people have a rude fucking awakening coming to them. I'll tell you that much right now, because you know what, no matter what people get away with, if you have a mean spirit and a mean heart, karma is real. It's going to come back to get you. So if you think you're getting off on your high horse instead of jerking off in your mom's basement, and this is like your next step to get that ultimate orgasm is to ruin someone's <laughs> life because you found him offensive. Well, guess what? There's a rude awakening coming for you. So get ready. Because it's like karma is real. That's what these people don't realize. It's like how you treat other people will come back to you. You know? How do you, what makes you believe that? Have you ever, have you seen any examples of that in your life? I have. I can't think of one like off the top of my head, but it, it is, it's always been said, like what you, what you put out will come back to you. It goes to the energy, it goes to the law of attraction, it goes to the Bible, it goes to all these different religious practices, you know, like you, you can't just be an asshole and expect to get away with it gonna come yeah. back to you maybe not it's, in this lifetime maybe in another you don't know it's like a big law of attraction thing too like the secret and yeah. it's like our thoughts are so powerful like your your whole life is the way it is right now because you have thought it into existence and if you if just can, choose your thoughts right. differently you can change the whole course of your life then we need to totally change the entire human race's thinking because apparently we all were thinking about a virus because here it really? is. <laughs> I mean, I think Bill Gates was thinking about a virus and he, oh, he's an idiot. He got a couple people to make it in a lab in Wuhan and poof, here oh, here God. we are. Yeah. That's the thing. He must have the vaccine because if he's Of course. He's, he's, yes, he does. Yeah. He's had right. it for oh, like yeah. over a year. When he did that um event two oh one or whatever, when he was like, Oh, this is what's what it's gonna be like when we get a virus and, and maybe it'll be called corona and yeah. That, that happened last year. So it's like, he's had this ready to go. And he's patented. He's like, yeah. patented. you can't patent like the flu or the cold or certain things, but you were able to patent this because I think it was like either it was new or there was some like rule. But yeah, the one thing about this Corona thing is everybody's talking about Bill Gates. Yeah. And here it was this rich Microsoft guy who was him and his wife had this charity and they were donating and to all these great causes and um saving children so, so the image was thought supposedly and then, but then we find out that they're actually yeah. sterilizing women in africa and um you know their vaccines are causing like horrific birth defects in oh, india right. yeah but it's like how ever, so many people are talking about this how are are they not being more investigated how are we being so silenced? Are they in bed with Soros? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think I think they're all kind of connected. I, and like to answer the question of like, how are people not like looking into it more? Like, unfortunately, like a lot of people in this country, like we just don't care unless it is directly affecting us. You know, like yeah. we we were hearing about the coronavirus when it was in China and like other countries, but it was kind of like, oh, that's interesting. And then when it touched down here, people are like, oh, okay, now now it matters. And that's, I think yeah. that's just kind of how people are. Yeah. It's just like, eh, not until it's in your backyard are you. And I think people are, a lot of people are just like dumb. And it's a lot of just like, uh, you know, mainstream media brainwashing. They're not going to follow the money. They're not going to see, you know, who's connected to what company and who's, what are the interests and what, you know, what are the motives that I think they're just, yeah. I, I think most people are just trying to like, go to work and provide for their family and like, you know, they yeah. have their distractions, you know, they have their sports and then that's kind of really it, you know? 
You know what I think? I watched this really interesting documentary. I've got to get the name for you. It's like unknown or unbeknownst or un hmm. it's something, but it's, it's this guy who worked for the government, right? Now, do you remember like a month ago how the Pentagon released like- The UFO videos, right? It was so, like- yeah. Alien life exists. The tic tac shaped um, yeah. craft. Yeah. Nobody said a fucking thing. Everybody yeah, said, it was okay. like nowhere. It should have been the biggest news. Well, people saw it, but nobody reacted to it. <laughs> like nobody cared. It was like, wait, are you kidding me? So I'm watching this documentary and it's going through how all these presidents have said, yes, alien life exists. We've kept it quiet we've never talked about it because we didn't want to I think I've seen it yeah like a pandemic right or like a, a mental pandemic with these people then they release it so I'm watching this thing and the and aliens are way more advanced than us we're way behind them oh yeah and we also they are, have better outfits everything yeah we're a culture that destroys each other right and destroys <laughs> ourselves and destroys our planet so like they don't want to touch down here or if they are so they release this thing and then in this documentary, they're saying that you can actually, that somehow a long time ago, they were able to grab one of the alien spacecrafts, duplicate the Oh, yes. We for sure have reverse engineered alien so spacecraft. Duplicate. So what's going to happen is what's next? The aliens are coming. But are they really the aliens? Or is it this deep state creating these spaceships to create a false and flag alien, yeah and an alien invasion right so aliens come the whole world comes together and i could be sounding totally crazy but at this time, no you don't sound crazy but like they come down now the whole world comes together to fight this this demon from outer space whatever they're going to make it out to be and then that's their way to have a one world one control government yeah and that's that's, the that's, that's definitely a theory going around like in the q yeah. community for sure and, that, and that's the thing too. It's like, you know, people call them conspiracy theories. The only reason that a conspiracy theory becomes a conspiracy theory or they say it is, is because they don't have the proof or they don't want to talk about it. So if we call it a conspiracy theory, then anyone that talks about it becomes a kook. Well, everybody <laughs> was a kook in this, the 60s, 70s, 80s, even the 50s, 90s talking about aliens. And now they're like, no, you were right. It's like, you just don't, you just don't know what to believe. I mean, honestly, if a spaceship landed in my front yard, I would be like, let me pack my bags. I'll be yeah. ready in five minutes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like you'd be like, what else? What yeah. Like, out of here? What else is this year going to throw at us? I, I don't know. I, I think the aliens have to be next. I mean, I think the aliens, they started getting interested in us when we started firing off nuclear weapons. Uh, like when we put the atom, that's exactly yeah. when they came back. And then they were like, huh, what? It sounds like you guys are fucking around a little too much over here on Earth. Like, let's check it out. Because then the, all the alien sightings were after that. And I think I Eisen know. Eisenhower was the first president to know. And every president since then has like, known about it and not talked about it and that was one of the reasons why jfk was assassinated he wanted to declassify the alien stuff and also he wanted um to move us to like a gold standard currency and like the deep state we basically i mean there's a lot of proof that we had him killed like our government so oh no, um, that's bad. yeah he was the best looking president it, it was a tragedy i know that, yeah right why'd you got to take out the hot one I know. <laughs> Don't take out the hot one. Marilyn um, Monroe too. She was killed because she was hooking up with, I think, him and his brother. Mm, get it, girl. Yeah, why not? Yeah, and then she was, I think she wanted to, to release something that she had yeah. heard. Or, yeah, and then that's how she was killed too. But of course, they're going to call it an overdose or an assassination, whatever they classify it as. But yeah, nothing on this planet scares me anymore. Yeah, that's like, kind of nice in a way. It's just kind of like, you know, life is life and we'll go to a, a better place eventually. And it's so short. You just have to just respect your your fellow humans and the ones you don't like. Just ignore them. It's not worth spreading hate and things yeah. like that. But yeah, I, I, it's like you open Facebook and you just want to puke. Eh, it's gross. I mean, Facebook is definitely like on the way down. You know, they they straight up admitted to. I mean, there was this big video that came out um, from Project Veritas. They had like an uh, a person, like a whistleblower, who who basically came out and said, "I used to work for Facebook um, 
in the, I guess, in like the content moderation. And he had people on tape admitting to that they would just straight up delete posts from Trump supporters. And they would, you know, they were very, very biased against anything pro-Trump. And they, you know, felt really righteous about it. And they're like, yeah, these people are Nazis. But it's like, yeah, like, this is part of, I mean, Facebook was already kind of tanking and it's like, it was already kind of a thing like, oh, it's for the old people. But now it's like with this such, to this degree of censorship, it's, it's just going to make people move to, you know, like a parlor even faster. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. And that's the thing too. It's kind of like sometimes, you know, it's always been like, you know, the Republican party was, was potentially, or known as the party with like the money and and more the capitalists. Right. But now you have all these capitalists trying to like take down that part. It makes no sense. Like why, like maybe he's better for the stock market. Why wouldn't Zuckerberg want to do what's best for the market? Why are they censoring this? Something else is going on that I just don't understand. It doesn't, it's not so black and white anymore. Yeah. I I feel like he, yeah, he's like, he says to Trump like, oh, we're not, but clearly they were, they were, they were censoring a lot of conservatives, a lot of people in the middle, um, a lot of Republicans and like not so many Democrats. So, and I don't know, I don't know what the hell, you know, it's like, look at the countries that have socialism. It's like, they're not doing they're not doing better than us. You know, I think socialism no. has been like really romanticized. Well, people, people think it's, it's great when they think about it in, in theory, right? Like these more, maybe uneducated, so to say, but then if you actually put them into a room and you say, okay, well, you're going to work 10 hours and you're going to work 30 hours, but you're going to get paid the same. Then they sit there and say, well, that's not fair. We yeah. said wanted socialism. So it's not broken down. They're sitting here, oh, you'll get like a, you know, a universal income, so to say, but you still have to work because it's not going to be enough to get a great lifestyle or, or maintain it, uh, the lifestyle of your choice, right? Yeah. So you still have to work, but the thing is you, you lose your innovation, you lose your creation, you lose like, if you take away, if you limit people on their income, why would they want to go to med school and work harder than right. getting paid the same? So yep. These people, especially these younger, this much younger generation getting out of college, it's like into this socialistic thing. It's like, you don't understand what it is because if you did, you would say that's not fair. And I was into it when I was, when I was that age, when I was right out of school, I had no fucking clue because who doesn't like the sound of free stuff? Um, it, it's not until you've been working yeah. for years and, and like busting your ass and but saving. Nothing is free. Right. Nothing is free. You're, you're paying for it one way or another. Yeah, exactly. No. So it's just, yeah, I think it's just, I wish we could find a way to educate our, our people more um, and really like, just wouldn't it be nice to have a government that works together instead of uh, against each other? That would be nice. That but would be. People, people have to remember <laughs> these presidents, these house speakers, these, I'm going to call them pieces of shit, politicians, they work for us. We don't work for them, but somehow the narrative has changed that like, we have to do everything to appease our leader. Like, no, no, that's, that's not how it works. Like they need to work for us and them fighting. They're actually not doing the job for the people. So it's just, it just makes me so sick to my stomach to just see so much hate in the world and it being advertised and putting, put on platforms and, and people that you should, that are old, that you should respect and look up to are, are the ones delivering this hate. I mean, Nancy Pelosi reminds me of a girl in fifth grade that didn't get invited to the birthday party. She sucks. She's like among the worst. Yeah. And I'm like, can you go like retire or do something? Cause like your tantrums are not a good look. Yeah. She's She's been in it. She's been in it way too long. Like I, I, you know, they all have their needs. Term limits need to be a thing. Fuck out of Dodge is what they need to do. We need to move like Washington to like the middle of like Kansas or something. (laughs) Like you have to start over. And like, or to Colorado where there are better looking guys. Yeah. Well, too many guys. They call this member for a reason. <sighs> I know. Like, let's David. talk about that. Cause like, uh, how did it, how did there get to be so many men living in Colorado? I don't know. Maybe it was like the great outdoors, you know, you could ski and you could fish and hike and, um, do all this, this stuff. And- it attracts like manly men. That's what we yeah. need. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's just kind of how it started. I mean, there's a lot of women here, don't get me wrong, but yeah. yeah and they're, they're overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're like, there's too much dick. 
Ugh, the best, the best problem to have. What am I like? The, what I find the most intriguing about you, Madison, is that like through the years I've known you, and like we've both been doing comedy, I don't think I've known you to be dating or hooking up with any other male comics. No. How do you avoid the temptation? You know, I fuck myself enough. <laughs> To, to be sure, it's like, what am I going to do? Go on a date and bounce jokes off each other? No. I also, I hooked up with this guy that when I worked on Wall Street, when I first got out of school, and there was this really cute uh, associate that sat behind me on the trading desk. And- Where did you work? At, at this investment bank called Namura Securities. Mm. And yeah. I flirted with him and we were roughly around the same age and we'd go to some bars and hang out and it was exciting. And then we hooked up and then of course it didn't work out. Ooh, an office um, romance. And it was so awkward and so uncomfortable and just sucked the joy out of what I'd worked so hard to do. And I, at that point said, I am never shitting where I eat again. That was it. That was absolutely it. So for comedy, it's like, you know, it could be the same thing. Everything's fine and well, fine and well. All of a sudden, it doesn't work out, and there's an awkwardness on either side. And now you're going into clubs, and you've created this awkwardness. And just yeah. for me, for some people, it works out really great. But for me, it's like I just wanted to keep that that part of my life separate. You know, it's hard. It's easy to say, but like, and I've said that to myself too over the years. And then I just be like, "Uh, oh, he's cute," and then you get drunk, and then whoops, yeah. <laughs> Right. And it, and it, yeah, it does. I mean, I've hooked up with one, one comic like almost 10 years ago. Um, and it was fun, but I'm do I know him? Uh, yes, you do. <sighs> Can I guess? Yeah, of course. Uh, Mark, yeah, Nor- Mark Norman. No, I wish. No. <laughs> um, God, there's just so many. No. Crystalia. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I wish. <laughs> um, 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 yeah. So it's like, I have to, who would be your type? You're never going to guess. Zach McGovern. Absolutely not. Love Zach. No. Oh, no. no. God. Nope. His dick Danny is- Palmer. Yeah, nope. <laughs> no, I think I let Danny, like, I think I like made out with Danny drunkenly one night, but that was it. I think. I don't as remember. As a friend. Yeah. Just as a friend. He's like the kind of guy who would just like make out with as a friend yeah a sweetheart yeah well sometimes but yeah no we love danny <laughs> we love danny if danny listens to this um, uh, no it was not. i was tell you it was harrison greenbaum oh my god <laughs> harrison greenbaum i like i keep forgetting that he was straight at one time or maybe he still oh, is right that's exactly right people would be like oh he's gay and i'll be like actually i've got proof he's not You're like i am living proof that he's very much not gay wow right. He may be a lot of other things now, but he's, uh, you know, but yeah, that was my only in 2011. Oh, wow. That was it. That's like, that's, I mean, yeah, I started in 2010. I hooked up with a lot of guys that are no longer doing stand up, which is great. And then like, yeah. I think at this point, everyone I've hooked up with and, and been with, I think I've surpassed. I'm, I'm point two away from having good. more Twitter followers than my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Not like I'm keeping yeah. track or anything oh, like that. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yep. I'm gaining up on them. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's what I do. I know. But a lot of people, I think, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, bang other comics because it's a life, it's a hard lifestyle for somebody that is in a more normal job. You know, it's like, oh, you got to run out and, and do these spots and travel all the time. So that can be difficult. And, you know, people like to be around people that are similar to them. Um, so that makes sense. But for a while, I was just like, oh, I just want to focus on my career. I don't want to have any distractions. I had a couple of relationships in there with some finance guys. Um, but they just proved to be more of a distraction at the time than anything. Why? Is it because they, did they want you to do less comedy and sort of have a more normal schedule? No, I think at that point, I was envious of their life. I was envious of their, like, freedom at night their the amount of money they had in their bank account um the houses things of that sort uh had i stayed on that path maybe i would have had that at the time um i think it was me craving a normal life that became the distraction because it was so thrown in your face um but yeah when you were single it was you know comedy's comedy's great comedy's got a lot of of downside to it um you know you're trying to make strangers laugh and and you don't get paid till you really really you get paid but not a lot till you really really make it 
So you're sacrificing a lot for something that's never guaranteed to give you anything back. Exactly. And I think it's even more of a sacrifice on women. Like I think part of the reason why we have so, so many more guys in stand up than when people go, Oh, there's no, there's not enough. No women are funny. Oh, there's not enough like funny female comics. It's like, first of all, there's fewer of us because most women are not willing to make the cir- the sacrifices that you and I make to, to be in comedy. And that's, that's what people don't realize. Cause like men, men don't, don't have to like be confronted with like oh shit do I want to like grind it out a few more years or do I want to have a family you know like it, yeah we got a short window for that I mean you can try to be a comedian until the day you die but you can't have a family until the day you die yeah and it's like it's real like, shit my, my mom actually said to me at one point she was like you spent your best dating years doing improv and I like it offended me at the time but she was kind of right you know I've spent I spent like all my 20s doing comedy and uh like who knows? Like, you know, if it were up to her, I would have spent those years, you know, hanging out on Wall Street with my tits out, hoping for the best. Right. Exactly. You know, and that's the thing, too, is like people will be like, oh, if you got married, you know, you probably would have been divorced. I'm like, yeah, but I would have gotten the payout. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's hard because it's like the road is not really like a female friendly thing because it's like like guys are more willing to rough it and sleep on like a couch covered in sand with like a dirty sheet over it you you know I feel like guys are more willing to share rooms with Mm -hmm. whoever else is performing whereas like if you're a woman you're like okay is this person gonna get drunk and like gonna try to stick it in in the middle of the night um it's just so much (laughs) more yeah there's just so much more that you have to think about and then it's, it's like when people ask me like, Oh, like, you know, what's advice if I get into comedy? Like, you know, what should I do? It's weird. It's like, it's such a lifestyle choice. It's such a commitment. Like you really need to be willing to sacrifice so much else in your life. Like you go also, ahead. People don't realize like how long it will take. And also like, I think one of the things that I can sit here now and, and say that held me back was like the fear, the fear of what other people would think, you know what I'm saying? Like not pushing myself to the limit on the stage because I was fearful it wouldn't be funny or I was fearing of something. Once you let the opinions of others go, you're fucking set free. So next time a comedian comes to you and says, Hey, I want to get into, or somebody and they says, Hey, I want to get into comedy. What's your advice? Get into comedy when you have fully let go of the need to care what other people think about you because at that moment you will sail free so fast and so far and it's a hard thing to do it's it is a hard thing to do because you have to not care what other people think of you but at the same time you are trying to connect with those people and and over a shared experience yeah so so you have to yeah it has to be like not care what people think meaning like don't hold yourself back because you're afraid they won't like you like take those chances and take those risks you know it's, it's like you owe those you owe to yourself to take those risks because then what? if you don't do it you risk not reaching who you're supposed to reach you risk not yeah. getting to your core audience and like you're, you you risk not finding who your true fans are and who really like loves you for you yeah and like I've been bad about that I mean I haven't really like been hanging out on Twitter and like putting jokes on I'm like well maybe I should do that again but as I've you know, kind of evolved into other things in the arts. It's like, you know, you're just trying to kind of find your, find your way and find your voice. And there is no right way to do it. And I think that social media has been a blessing for that. It's really given people a platform that Hollywood never would have given them, you know, yeah. and it's like you, you, ha- you can put the balls in your court, your own court. It's opened up so much, like you're not really reliant on like a Hollywood or even like a manager um, to get your stuff out there. It's like, you just need like a YouTube channel and it's so easy to just like, you could get on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, like it's so easy. Um, yeah, exactly. Like the, the, the people will find you and the money speaks volumes and the, the followers and you're on your way. Where, what all, like what, um, platforms is your podcast on? It's on all, all the, the platforms unless like a new one popped up and I haven't updated yet I have no idea I feel like every time we turn around there's something happening with podcast yeah 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 like Stitcher and iTunes and Spotify I mean those are the main ones that I think people gravitate towards then we have a website um the videos are on YouTube but I think my people have been more with the audio because they can kind of listen to them in the car 
uh, or while they're working out. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, cause you've seen it with people's podcasts, like they've just blown up, you know, and you wonder what it oh, is, yeah. but you know, it's like, I sit back and, and I'm like, good for them. That's amazing. That's admirable. What can I learn from them? And that's where I think we went so wrong in our society as a whole, especially in entertainment. Instead of celebrating people's successes, we became jealous and we, we became bitter. It's like when I hear somebody, somebody told me the other day, they said, oh my God, this kid from high school. Yeah. The fucker is slated to make like 4 million bucks this year. And you know what? I was Good for so him. Yeah. joyful and happy. And I said, I want to hear more about that. I want to hear more of people like him. I'm so sick of, of people trying to keep people small, people not celebrating people's wins. And it's like, no, like that when people win or are successful, I'm like, fuck yeah, let's bring on that. Like if some guy called me up and said, I'm making $55 million this year, I would be like, be like hi, I'm single. <laughs> fucking greatest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Teach me because I know there's no magic formula, but it, it goes to mindset and to hard work and to a great idea and to networking with the right people. Like we need to start celebrating people who are successful in this country, not demonizing them. Right. Like, you know? like it's a bad thing that you want to do well. And, it is not a bad yeah. thing. It is a great thing to come up with an idea and to work hard and to earn it yourself and to have the things that you want that make you happy. And, you know, let's face it the more money you make, the more you can give back to help those causes that you are passionate about. So, you know, let's get back to celebrating success and not. Yeah. It. And I know like, as that, as that applies to comedy, I find the people that are most salty and like shitting on other comics are the ones that like haven't found their fans and haven't found their comedic voice and like, never gonna make it. aren't that hardworking yeah. or talented. And it's like, it's funny how that works out. You know, it's like, it's the people that are doing worse than you that are, you know, shitting on you. Well, that's, that's always how it is because people just, you know, we've this culture, like people are just like, Oh, I'm jealous. You know, it's this jealousy thing where it's like, don't be jealous. Like fucking cheer these people on. Like there's room for yeah. all of it. So and I, like there were times where I would get jealous, but like now I don't anymore because it's like, there's this kind of unconscious notion that humans have that there is somehow like a, a limited amount of opportunity. And if somebody gets something that means like if you got something, I'd be like, well, this is one less um, opportunity for the ladies out there. Like that's not how it works. Like there's unlimited no. opportunities. We each create our own opportunities. There's no lack of anything. Well, and that's exactly right. And that's why you just like Catherine Narducci, she was on my podcast like last summer. She's an actor. She was in, or an actor. She was in um, The Irishman. She's Ooh. was in Sopranos. Wonderful woman. And she had said, like, if you if you guys are listening, go back and listen to episodes. Catherine Narducci. I can't remember which which number it was, but she had said, I was never intimidated or jealous when another actress or actor got something because I knew what was meant for me was going to be for me and I would continue to work hard and it never took me off my track and the roles that were meant for me found that found their way to me and so there was no need to take the energy and to be upset about it because it just wasn't meant for me and that's the same thing like when you're auditioning or if you don't make a festival it's like it wasn't meant to be you know, you kind of, that goes back to the faith thing. Like, you know, everything kind of happens for a reason in a way. Like there's a different door that's going to open. Great book you have to read, Chrissy. Ooh, and, ooh. Too. Okay, I like books. Whether you like them or not, it's one of the best freaking books I've ever read. And I have proof that what he's saying works. So the book is Joel Osteen's Breakout. Okay, the minister that's on TV, right? Okay, it's called like Breakout. Breakout called breakout it's it's a lot about having faith and the mindset and whether you're religious or not you can use it for the universe whatever you call something that's bigger than you because there is something always bigger than us right and in this case in my case it was like asking asking god for what you want or it could be the universe or whatever and god will give you what you want Right. But some people are so limited that they, they think, and they ask so small. And sometimes when you have problems or you're frustrated, you just have to say, you know what, God, I know that 
you are the creator and you are responsible for, for everything that goes on. And I'm going to give this to you and I'm going to have faith in you. And I know that if this door is meant to open for me, it will open and this is all going to work out. And here's my proof. I'm reading the book and I'm going through this and I'm going, oh my gosh, I have to have, I have to have God size. I need to have like God size ask or whatever, you know, mm. God can do anything. So it's like ask bigger. And I remember I was trying to get this contract done for like a production we were working on and it wasn't getting signed. There was back and forth, back and forth to where I almost felt like we were so close and the deal was just going to fall apart. And I'd worked so hard on it. And I was like, this can't go away. This can't go away. And I was reading that book and I just looked up and I said, you know what, God, I said, if this is meant for me, it'll be done. I said, there's nothing I can do. If the contract gets signed, if they, then it's meant to be, if they walk away, then that's meant to be. God, just show me the right way. And I'm, I'm putting it in your hands. There's nothing more I can do here. And I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I had an email from my attorney that said the contract's been signed. Wow. And I knew at that moment I got chills. I said, that wasn't anyone else. That was God. What do you say to people who think, um, like, and I, and I agree with you. I think, I think you do have to like, leave it up to God. And like, what do you, what do you, like, what would you say to people who think like, well, if you believe whatever's meant for me will find me, doesn't that take away from one's own personal responsibility and working hard? No, cause you have to act. Act, action is a big part of it, right? So you can sit there and say, hey, God, I really want to, you know, be on this TV show. Oh, help me open those doors to meet the right people to get on that TV show. But then you just sit in your apartment and don't do anything, then it's not going to happen. So you, you're putting it out there. This is what I want. Please guide me on my journey. And then you kind of listen to your intuition and you start doing things like, going through LinkedIn, trying to find people, networking with people, working on your own creative writing. So things you have to act and do action of things that will move you towards your goal. Like if you just sit there, it's never going to work. That's why people are like, oh, I read the law of attraction. It doesn't work. Well, what did you do? Well, I read the book. Okay. Did you follow anything that it said in the book? Like action is it's the only way that there can be, you know, a result is you have to, you have to put the freaking work in. I remember like my grandma always would like t be throwing different like Bible phrases at me growing up, but she'd always be like, God helps those who help themselves, you know, well, that's so right. And I'm like, all right, get off your ass, you know? No, it, it's true. Because the thing is, like, you, do you ever have those days where maybe it's a, a, a work day and maybe you like didn't go to work or you weren't as productive, maybe you stayed home and you just feel like, shit that night and mm -hmm. you're depressed and then you have those days where maybe maybe even you're out of work or something but you're super busy and you're productive and you're you're doing something that's going to fuel what your dreams and desires are and how happy you are yeah like with we have to have purpose you take away somebody's purpose you take away their will to live so that's the whole thing too it's like yeah your purpose may be to get a TV show or to start a skincare line or to open up an investment bank. But you, that's your, your, that's your end result of your purpose. Your purpose is, is driving the action to get to that point. Yeah. You know? And it makes you feel better. Like, do you ever, do you do to-do list? Uh, I do. Yeah. I, I like sometimes I love them. I'll just have them be like mental to-do list, but yeah, I often, like I often am making, to do lists like oh my God, and, and then different types of lists for like different areas yeah. of my life and then I'll often yeah. just ignore them. Well um, you gotta you gotta do the the scratch off thing. Like the list and then you scratch. Oh yeah. Sometimes That's I'll like, write things down I've already done just to just to cross them off. Right. Cause it's sometimes more enjoyable and enjoyable than like some dude going down on you. I'm telling okay, you. Okay, let's not go that I'm far. Okay. <laughs> I um, felt like I was so serious. So I had to bring it back to the sexual. No, it's so true. And I think, and I think like, I read a lot of Gabrielle Bernstein who she Who's takes that? a lot. She's like, um, she, I guess she writes, um, she, she's on like the New York times bestseller list. She, she's more like the spiritual self-help kind of area, but everything she talks about, like her principles are like, instead of saying God, she'll just say the universe, but it's all the same stuff. Um, same thing, yeah. She's, I've read like almost all of her books, except for the new one. Um, she has one called the universe has your back, which is all about, you know, faith basically. And 
you know, kind of like asking for signs and, um, you know, just like really doing the work and being like conscious of it, of the things that you want and, and like, you know, going for them. Do you know what I find that the hardest thing about the whole like law of attraction universe thing is that they always say like the mind, the mind conceives what it believes or something. I forgot what the, the quote was, but you have to basically live your life like it's already happened where a lot of people are like, no, I need proof, right? I need to see the number in the account. I need to see the car in the driveway, the house. So that's where it takes full mental capacity. To so like you're, so you're saying like live like you're already a millionaire, but what if somebody's like, well, I'm not a millionaire. How do I live like a millionaire if I'm the money isn't there? Well, first of all, if you really want to be a millionaire and retain millionaire status, you're not out spending on frivolous shit to impress people you don't give a shit about, right? Mm, if you want to be a millionaire, you you say, okay, well, I just increased my income 400%, but do I really need to increase my lifestyle that much more? Wow. Take a nice vacation. That's a millionaire mindset. Millionaire mindset is not going out and buying like jets and all this stuff. If you've got so much that you can't keep it all in the bank and you don't know where to invest it, then that's a different story. But yeah, it's it's you know, and it, like, I, I just like, I, during this pandemic, I've learned how to save and how to get rid of money I was spending that I felt like was just such a waste. Like what? Like, like, right. Isn't that why you like never get your nails done? I think I, you told me that well, like that, this always chips, like mm-hmm. I'll do my toes. But then I was like, I, I don't have a boy. I didn't have a boyfriend forever. So I was like, nobody why? to suck on your toes. <laughs> yeah. Why would I pay, why would I pay somebody to paint my toes? And my <laughs> And then also like I was paying for like ad free Pandora and I was paying for like okay. some book thing that I never use. And I went through it and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And it's like the not bringing lunch versus, you know, eating out all the time. It was like 20 bucks a day when you were in the city. And then, so there's all oh, yeah. ways to save money. And you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm getting off on like being like, like frugal, which is a good, cheap is bad, frugal is good. So you know, it's, it's, that's how you can live like a millionaire to where you don't, you're not worrying about, cause you know, you're going to have it. You're not worrying about the lack of money or will there be enough? You get out of that lack mentality and you say, no, there is enough. There's absolutely enough. And it's going to be there and I don't have to worry. So or it's not, give it to God. So it's not just about like obsessing about making more money. It's thinking about like, okay, where can I spend less? That too. And I think it all goes t- together. You know, it's like sometimes you just get out of control with your spending, but you know, once you start really like building up and, and, and saving and you start looking at that number grow, it's, it's exciting, you know? And you're just like, Oh gosh, if I could, you know, up my income and keep my lifestyle, like this is fantastic. Yeah. What are some of the things that you have stopped spending money on since the pandemic? Um, ad free Pandora. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black. Um, eating out lunch every day. I'm not doing that. Going out to dinner as much. Um, when I do go out to dinner with friends, it's like, it's a special occasion and I have fun. Um, instead of just being like, eh, I'm bored, let's go. You know? Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, I'm not going, I mean, I think, I feel like everybody's kind of saving money right now because we're not going to the bars. We're not going on vacation. Yeah. Going to the what's, what's, like for me personally, I know that like, uh, every day in the city, like when I come out of the train, I always walk by the same Sephora and like some days the Sephora is calling your name and you're like, look at all this fresh lipsticks, you know? And then I like, it's a day where I like, for, you know, forgot makeup or didn't put on any. And then you're like, well, let me just go in and I'll just like freshen up. I'll just like, you know, put on some sample stuff and then you leave. You're like, ah, oh, well, those God. days are, those days are over. <laughs> yeah. You think no more, no more sampling of. Yeah. Well, crap. Not, until, not until they have a quote unquote vaccine, which I'm not sure I'm going to be taking, but yeah, me neither. Fuck that. Depends noise. on who makes it. If Bill Gates is involved, I'm not. Bill Gates is for sure going to be involved. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those days are over. Are you kidding me? People used to like, I mean, I would always spray it with the alcohol, the lipstick, right? Spray oh, yeah. Of course. Down. Yeah. And then I would trim the top. Yeah, the really? Top, right? Sorry, Sephora, for wasting it, but I spent Wait, what would you trim it with? Would you bring, like, scissors with you? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, one of the Q-tip things they have. Okay. Oh, yeah. You sort of, like, shave a little off. Shave it off. After I've already sprayed it, right? And, and then, like, 
and then take some on your hand and put it on with the brush versus like on your, oh, but yeah. a lot of people just pick it up, put it on their face and put it down. But here's another thing. Okay. We need germs. And yeah. Viruses, germs are good. And viruses to build our immune system. So that's my concern too. It's like, you know, you're not touching the door handle anymore. And then like, picking your nose. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing all those things. I've never right. stopped picking my nose. I'm, I'm like weirdly right. so not afraid of the virus. I just think like, you know, you got to keep your immunity high. I think a lot of it is bullshit. Yep. A lot of it's been like overinflated and uh, like overblown to keep people scared and confused. And Listen, uh, I'm taking my vitamins staying healthy and, mm -hmm. you know, keeping my faith. Listen, if, if I get taken out by the coronavirus, like when I'm taking precautions, wearing a mask inside, but not being too crazy about it, being healthy, getting outside and I die from Rona, it, that, that's, that was my time. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to live in fear. Sorry, media. You don't got me. Uh -uh. Oh. Not, not applying to your fear narrative. Not anymore. <laughs> it's all good. Rainbows and sunshine here. I'm just waiting for the aliens because I'm going to pack my bags and go with them. <laughs> I hope the aliens like me. I don't know. I got to pick out like, I'm a nice- I'm excited for the aliens. A nice I hope green dress or something. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but then the aliens don't have any genitals. Maybe they're just like not sexual beings at all. Like maybe they wouldn't even find this attractive. Well, maybe you won't even want to have sex once you leave the gravitational pull. Hmm. Maybe our desire, we don't know. None of us know anything. Maybe a certain, after you're like a certain, you know, height, your, your Hitachi magic wand no longer works. Oh, that's so tragic. Yeah. Or you're just having orgasms all the time because you're just floating in pure ecstasy. You God, that sounds fun. That sounds like drugs. That sounds like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I've noticed like, not walking past all the stores every day, not just like going into TJ Maxx, like, oh, let me just see if I'm, I need some new socks. I think my boyfriend needs underwear, you know, but I would, oh, it's so easy to spend a hundred bucks in TJ Maxx over like- But do, do me a favor and all your listeners should do this too, because I did it and it helped me tremendously. Um, go through your your last three months or, four, or six months of uh, credit card bills Oh, and yeah. just kind of start highlighting the stuff that you were spending on and kind of then find out ways that, did I really need that? Because we always think we need stuff and we don't. Like, I'm not buying any summer clothes right now because I don't have anywhere really to wear that. I'm going to backyard barbecues. Right. For fit, or like lake houses with family. So I'm like, do I need to buy a ton of new clothes? Nope. So like, yeah. do about it that way so go through your budget and just figure out like oh well, I could save here or save here and then there's so many apps that you can you know either do a roundup on your checking account that will hmm, really back. yeah it's like there's one called acorns which is which is good um and it can round up so if you're spending you know 15 67 it's going to round that up and then when it hits a certain amount it'll put money in. You can also set automatic deductions. So there's so many ways, especially with like either an IRA or 401k to make sure you have those automatic, you know, um, contributions, but then having another one, like a lot of people will set up a, um, and I, and I'm speaking because I made this mistake before where you'll have a savings account or a money market account through the bank. You have your money in, whether it's bank of America or chase and you're earning like zero bips on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Like there, it's nothing where you can actually open up like a brokerage account, for example, like Schwab and put your cash in there where you have access to it, but you're earning higher basis points. So it's, it, you know, in order, you got to have money to make money. So there's all these different things. I've definitely, even though I majored in finance, I kind of went off the rails as I wasn't doing it anymore. And then now like re-educating myself and, and getting excited about it because I can tell you one thing, like I, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to feel scared. I don't want to feel like, Oh my God, I can't retire or I can't pay my house or I'm going to get evicted or, you know, and nobody should feel that way, but it's up to us to start taking charge of our futures. Oh, so like, are there any, like, but I mean, I just, I mean, I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Like I am barely saving. So like for anybody and by anybody, I mean me listening who, like, um, what would be some first good like introductory resources or like books or um i mean I, i'm not sure about like 
book. I, I don't have like books off the top of my head. Yeah. Necessarily read. I mean, Rich Dad Poor Dad has been a book that has been talked about a lot. Hmm. Um, you know, but there's a lot of if you kind of go to it, your Barnes and Noble and you go to the finance and investing section, there should be a lot of help there. Um, but definitely look into those automatic. Uh, investment apps too and just start with that you can start with like 20 bucks a month or really but that's a little pathetic so start with 50 okay at least 50. if you can do more you can do more find out like oh my gosh if I just like don't eat breakfast every day maybe I could do you know a hundred like okay there, there's ways you can you can um but that's a good thing and you'd be surprised I remember I set that up on my phone when I was having a conversation with my aunt years ago and I set it up at like 20 bucks a month at the time. And then I increased it and it was also rounding up the checking account um, purchases and then putting in, investing the other one into the account. Um, and I, I remember, I, I couldn't even remember my password. I just knew it was hitting all the time and it was, you know, registered with the SEC. And I went in there and I couldn't believe how much money was in there. Wow. I mean, you got it. And that's the thing is you got to start today and like the compound interest and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my God, I have all these accounts with like all this different money, but it didn't cost me a lot because I just put it on automatic and forgot about it. And this was not one of those brokerage kinds of kind of apps, like kind well, of this accounts? One was the Acorns app okay. which you download on your, on your phone. Um, and then instead of having money in like a traditional money market saving account, savings account at a bank, um, look into like a Charles Schwab brokerage account because you're just going to earn more more basis points on it. So you're going to be Ooh. earning more money if it's just sitting there. And especially like people have cash sitting around because they need it, right? So um, you can invest some of it into stocks or get an advisor, but you, you need to have cash on hand as well. Um, you know, if you should always have a reserve. They say six months of a reserve, but ah. <laughs> earning more. <laughs> I know. That's, that's funny. Like, oh my gosh. Where's my big three months? Coming? Holy crap. Um, wow. I'm so far. Like, we touched on that. everything during this podcast. I felt like we I really just have a lecture and, oh, and make sure you're an artist, which therefore qualifies you as a, um, mentally ill. No, <laughs> that and 1099. Um, okay. So you need to make sure that, especially, you know, that you're writing things off. Like when you're commuting to go to a show, you're commuting to go to work. That is a write-off. Um, but don't you only, don't, don't the write-offs only matter when you start to make more than you're spending? No. No? Okay. No, not necessarily. Because what happens is like, I, you know, we know each other. I know that you have a W-2 income, right? So you're paying taxes on your W-2 income. God, your listeners are probably like, can we go back to the porn? This is boring. <laughs> Listen, you guys, it'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to show my tits after this. It's going to be great. Oh, no, good. Um, <laughs> what if I just whipped out my titties? And I was like, okay, so LLC. No, but because- I don't you, have an LLC yet for comedy. I, I need to, you, I need to okay. start one. You should do that. Okay. Um, you, but the thing is like, you, you're already paying all these taxes anyway. So like this can actually offset it and you can get yourself a larger refund. Ooh, and then okay. when, you're, when you're not working a W-2 and you're primarily working for your LLC and working 1099, like you're, you have to keep track of those because those are expenses in order to do business. So there's a lot of different ways that you can, I know somebody told me though, like, you should run a financial education class for comedians and artists. Oh God, for you'd I make really a killing. You really would. Best. Yeah. I know. You really should. I, I would attend it for sure. Yeah. Maybe I should. I should, I should you know, see, kind of put a group together and see, you know, everybody can just come, it'll be free. And then they can Venmo me what they feel. Basics. You could do it with zoom even, you know, like put together yeah. the points you would go over and then I don't know, whatever you charge, you know, Venmo, and then you send them the zoom link. Yeah. Right. That's true. Or do it that way. I really should. Cause I feel like a lot of artists like don't have no clue. They don't have yeah. that basic financial education. And then something like this happens and they're like shit out of, out of water. So, yeah. So, I mean, those are the things like during the pandemic that I've been really excited about, like just, um, the aliens coming <laughs> and financial like, education, it's financial and saving. Yeah. And financial education. So it's been, it's been, it's been good. I've had time to, to be creative and work on like I would say it's been a very productive time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought I would be Marie Kondoing my closet more. I did buy a new shoe rack, but 
Ooh. I've only bought like a couple new pairs of shoes. I'm talking about like, oh, I'm saving all this money, but I did just totally. Yeah, where, where are you going? So no more, more shoes. No more right. Shoes. Unless they really make you happy, then bad shoes. shoes. really do make you happy. <laughs> I know, right? But they're cheap. They're like, you know. But yeah, no more shopping after this. Right, Except there you go. Purse. Now you're going to be like, hmm, I was going to spend $100 on a dress. Now I'm going to put it into this account. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Madison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are going to do it. I want to follow up with you. Make sure you downloaded that app when we're done. Oh shit! Oh shit! Okay, Madison, where <laughs> where can the good people find you and your podcast? Um, so they can. Uh, the podcast is next to madison.com. It's available on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, all the podcast platforms. Um, videos are on YouTube as well, and um, at next to Madison. And then my Instagram is at Madison Malloy M A L L O Y comic. And then Twitter, Madison Malloy. Um, yeah, Parlor, Madison Malloy. I'm no Parlor, baby. Uh, what else? Facebook, Madison Malloy. Yeah, just find me. You know, so I'll, I'll be posting. I'm going to be going on a um, a lake vacation soon. So there'll be lots Ooh. of bikini photos. Yes. Stuff to look forward to. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can always, you know, reach out to me um, about finances and I'll, I'll help where I can. I love it. Madison, thank you so much for coming thank on the show. You. I appreciate it. I, I love watching your show and, and, you know, seeing your guest and I think it's, it's great. And, uh, yeah, you and I have been friends for like 10 years, so I can't wait I can't to believe it. working together <sighs> Yeah. for the next 50. Will we still be alive in 50? Yeah. Hopefully we're oh, alive for sure. in 50, unless the aliens come. Then unless I'm the, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks Madison. All right. Thank you guys. Bye. Love you, bye. <laughs>